that's a map of the nervous system as a network of neurons. So you've heard that neurons are the cells inside the brain that uh, perform all kinds of amazing things and they're connected by synapses and an important goal of my field is to map that network of neurons. To imagine it, think about the back pages of airline magazines. There are those maps that show cities and flights between cities. And just imagine that every city were replaced by a neuron and every flight between cities by a connection. That would be something like a connectome, except that you have to imagine 100 billion cities and thousands of flights per city. It would never fit inside a magazine. It's an incredibly complicated uh, map full of lots of information. One of the oldest hypotheses in neuroscience is that your memories are somehow stored inside this map of connections. Everyone's map is different, and your memories are different from mine, so maybe that information is stored inside your connectome. We know that every experience changes the connections inside your brain, and so it's plausible that that's how the trace of the past gets stored. But neuroscientists have never been able to see this connectome, so we have failed to test this theory. And, and my field is about developing technologies to see connectomes, to find these maps. In century, neuroscientists have speculated that maybe your memories, the information that makes you you, maybe your memories are stored in the connections between your brain's neurons. And perhaps other aspects of your personal identity, maybe your personality and your intellect, maybe they're also encoded in the connections between your neurons. And so now you can see why I propose this hypothesis, I am my connectome. You grow during childhood and age during adulthood. Your personal identity changes slowly. Likewise, every connectome changes over time. What kinds of changes happen? Well, neurons, like trees, can grow new branches, and they can lose old ones. Synapses can be created, and they can be eliminated. And synapses can grow larger, and they can grow smaller. Second question, what causes these changes? Well, it's true. To some extent, they are programmed by your genes, but that's not the whole story, because there are signals, electrical signals that travel along the branches of neurons and chemical signals that jump across from branch to branch. These signals are called neural activity. And there's a lot of evidence that neural activity uh, is encoding our thoughts, feelings, and perceptions, our mental experiences. And there's a lot of evidence that neural activity can cause your connections to change. And if you put those two facts together, it means that your experiences can change your connectome. And that's why every connectome is unique, even those of genetically identical twins. The connectome is where nature meets nurture. And it might be true that just the mere act of thinking can change your connectome, an idea that you may find empowering. What's in this picture? A cool and refreshing stream of water, you say. What else is in this picture? Do not forget that groove in the earth called the stream bed. Without it, the water would not know in which direction to flow. And with this stream, I would like to propose a metaphor for the relationship between neural activity and connectivity. Neural activity is constantly changing. It's like the water of the stream. It never sits still. The connections of the brain's neural network determine the pathways along which neural activity flows. And so the connectome is like the bed of the stream. But the metaphor is richer than that, because it's true that the stream bed guides the flow of the water. But over long time scales, the water also reshapes the bed of the stream. And as I told you just now, neural activity can change the connectome. 
And if you'll allow me to ascend to metaphorical heights, I will remind you that neural activity is the physical basis, or so neuroscientists think, of thoughts, feelings, and perceptions. And so we might even speak of the stream of consciousness. Neural activity is its water, and the connectome is its bed. So let's return from the heights of metaphor and return to science. Suppose our technologies for finding connectomes actually work. How will we go about testing the hypothesis, I am my connectome? Well, I propose a direct test. Let us attempt to read out memories from connectomes. Consider the memory of long temporal sequences of movements, like a pianist playing a Beethoven sonata. According to a theory that dates back to the 19th century, such memories are stored as chains of synaptic connections inside your brain. Because if the first neurons in the chain are activated, through their synapses, they send messages to the second neurons, which are activated, and so on down the line, like a chain of falling dominoes. And this sequence of neural activation is hypothesized to be the neural basis of those sequence of movements. So one way of trying to test the theory is to look for such chains inside connectomes. But it won't be easy, because they're not going to look like this. They're going to be scrambled up. And so we'll have to use our computers to try to unscramble the chain. And if we can do that, the sequence of the neurons we recover from that unscrambling will be a prediction of the pattern of neural activity that is replayed in the brain during memory recall. And if that were successful, that would be the first example of reading a memory from a connectome. 